Blues Man um, basically was a song that uh, I performed many, many years ago with a, what was then my band called the AM Blues Band. I think uh, when blues had a sort of very slight revival and was um, popular in the sort of the wider cultural sort of media world for about 30 seconds. that we did. Uh, I, it had been played to me, I think, by either the guitarist uh, Brian Ward or Dave Stevens, the bass player, I can't remember who was in that band at the time. And uh, I thought it was a, an amazing track. I really loved it. And um, so that became kind of our signature track for that particular, that particular band. And uh, when I came to reform uh, well, not reform, but to put together the new uh, blues band um, under the big funk umbrella, it was a natural track to, to record. <laughs> players in the new version of this band and uh, I was very pleased to get uh, Andy Smith who's a phenomenal uh, guitarist. <laughs> Japanese manga films. Oh, really? I didn't know that you were in them or you were playing. <laughs> well, it's probably a bit of both. Uh, I've done a lot of uh, the Bleach and some other Japanese manga series. I've done quite a lot. Wow. I've been in Japan, I've done some stuff over there. Um, worked for another Japanese girl called, uh, her name is Misha. She's a Japanese pop star. Produced a couple of things from a couple of her albums. Oh, wow. Um, done a stadium tour with her. And you did Wet Life, of course. Yes, we did West Life. Yes, and... Uh, I did all that, All Saints, Blue, uh, Billy Piper, Jamelia. Um, uh, Fuji's... Uh, Lauren Hill. Lauren Hill, uh, yeah. What else have I done? Uh, Royes, Robin S. The uh, fabulous Ernie McCone, who's just uh, brilliant. My sister used to uh, date a guy from a band called Light the World, and so I was exposed at a young age to, to bands rehearsing and playing, and that was it. I realised it was for me. We kind of pioneered the acid jazz scene really in the uh, early eight, or late 80s 
um, and then we we kind of morphed into Galliano because that appeared and they needed a backing band, so we did that, and that took us all the way up to the nineties. Right, and then what what happened after Galliano? Well, after Galliano, um, we kind of went our separate ways a little bit. I started playing with uh, Carlene Anderson, that led to playing with Paul Weller. Um, from there, I ended up kind of just sessioning really, like I do now, you know, for different artists who come from America and so on, people like yourself, you know, and so on and so forth. And that's really what I do now. I, I, I organize pickup bands and so on. Michael, who's an amazing drummer, and was previously, of course, in 24 Pesos um, with Julian Burdock, so uh, is very familiar with the whole blues thing. My dad's a drummer, actually, and he taught me from an early age. And I used to climb inside the bass drum when he when he was playing it, which was not you know, very good for your hearing or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that explains a lot. <laughs> was a track that I'd written uh, with the, my musical partner at the time called Neil McDougall. sort of the AM blues band, although we had a sort of a separate outlet called Wooden Mac, but the whole thing was blues based and Rome Wasn't Built in a Day was a kind of uh, track that was very much uh, written to be performed in that sort of um, situation. I think, and, and Bill Evans, and all those those kind of guys. But really, I, I was listening to artists like um, Judy Zook uh, back when I was a kid, and um, Super Tramp, and, and Zeppelin, and Pink Floyd. And, and my father introduced me to a lot of music. Um, Thin Lizzy, you know, but a live concert, and this Australia band called the Little River Band. They're all these kind of bands that that had a lot of great musicianship in them. Um, which is then, when I was seventeen or eighteen, I then discovered Herbie, and then then everything that led on from that, really. Um, also, the classical things are a big influence on me, um, especially the, the later things like Ravel and you know, Debussy and Rachmaninoff, perhaps. Um, but, you know, music, really. Obviously, on the recording, um, there's brass and there's um, background vocals supplied by the inimitable and wonderful Susan Allerday. Recorded. Go on, smile at the camera. Go on, you know. <laughs> Here we go. You play the game too easy. Good. And then, um, 
when the band's able to do a larger lineup that uh, I do like to employ you know uh, wider instrumentation when possible but the basic lineup is is a standard sort of rock blues pop type of combo sounds I'm sounding very uh, Dave D <laughs> but yeah you know bass drums guitar piano and vocal uh, plus me and noodling along with harmonica occasionally as well. Yeah.